Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Star Ocean. Last time we figured up all our business in the town of Hot, and now we can finally move on with a new party member, which of course is very helpful. Now, last time I went over some of the skills uh, that we gained in this game. Maybe I wasn't uh, particularly accurate or specific about what I was talking about. Um, I think I added a little annotation or a little caption or whatever in the last one, but I do want to make sure I'm very clear on this. Um, the only points we're going to be putting into skills for quite some time are going to skills that raise our strength, and only if they only have one skill point to, you know, that's their only cost. There is a specific reason for that. Like, I'm not going to go and put points into whistling because that's not going to help me at this point in the game. Even though it only costs one, it's a wasted skill point at this point, and we're going to need as many as we can get eventually. However, a lot of the item creation or special skills that we get from putting points into these skills aren't particularly useful early game and will be a lot more useful later game when we get a certain skill first that we obviously don't have yet. It's actually one of the last ones we get, which is kind of unfortunate. So that's uh, how I'm going to do that. Uh, patience, I'm not going to put any points to, even though it raises my stats because it costs two points, and that's a waste of points. I'm not going to be super anal about this throughout the entire game, just the first half where it really doesn't make sense because you don't need um, all of the extra little tiny little stat boosts that you're going to get from these things. And so yeah, I just wanted to make sure I went over that, clear as I can be about it, and uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's move on now. We uh, have our dash ability now, thank God. Anyway, if we head north, we will arrive at a very familiar location, Mount Metox. Ah, well, now, I went over here before. Now, again, let's uh, use that save state I was using last time. Let's uh, head in here to the abandoned mine. First things first, let's go down here. Uh, let's run, run, run. Ah, we got one shot. Ah, I got through. <laughs> cool. Anyway, let's, uh, that's not the one I wanted. Let's pick up this one. If I can get through this, I will keep it. If I can't, I'm not. I did it. Wow. That, uh, wow. <laughs> I did not expect to be able to do that. I'm going to go run back and, uh, you know, heal up at the inn after that, but the Emerald Ring, you're not supposed to go into this dungeon at all yet. Normally, I've tried this like six times, I could never get any of the items. You can get other items in there which can break the early game, but you just, you're not powerful enough to survive. You need to be able to survive a few hits in order to do an early run-in, and I will be doing an early run-in. Um, not super early, but at a point where you're probably not supposed to go in there, I'm going to go and pick up some extra gear early because it's quite useful. But again, it's not game breaking what I'm going to grab. This here reduces MP cost by a third, which would be an awesome thing to have if I could equip it. Yes, they gave us an MP reducing item, but will not let our fighters use it. It is mage only, which is really stupid. Anyway, I'm going to run back to town, and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Now, my plan, actually, was to go in there and just get annihilated and kind of show off what Game Over was like. I'll have to do that later, I guess. But, uh, yeah, he, this game actually gives you access to some pretty cool... Uh, use the tech, please. Thank you. Yeah, since I'm being kind of surrounded, I want to use my tech. I'm losing a lot of HP. <laughs> yeah, ooh, scary. Radix gain a level, that's nice. And lucky for us, just like in uh, in the uh, the future world, the spring is still here and we can actually heal. So this would be a good place to grind if you feel the need to. Uh, huh, manhunt, huh? I guess it's kind of a manhunt. We're searching for a man and a woman. It's not really a manhunt, though. Eh, anyway. Anyway, does Seas have a goal? Apparently not. To polish my swordsmanship. Seas, you're an idiot. <laughs> Whatever. Um, not particularly. It's the same level as we are. He does a little more damage because he has that two-handed sword and he basically doubles Radix damage. 
but that will not last long. Anyway, let's talk to you. Yes, it is. And it's still free healing. Score. Yeah, well, I'll probably come back there a couple of times off-screen because this area can be a little difficult. Well, not necessarily that it's all that difficult to navigate or, you know, kill all the enemies here. But you do fight a lot of enemies along the way, and it will be beneficial to go and heal up every once in a while if you don't want to start throwing out a fortune for items. So, anyway. That's how I see it anyway. So pretty much this area is exactly the same as it was before, or I guess in the future, whatever. Yeah, if I can use uh, Rift Wave to hit two people at once, I'll probably use it because that actually makes it kind of useful. But other than that, it's not a particularly good skill, so I probably won't use it very often. Um, with that being said, let's pick up a Resurrect Bottle. Again, hold on to these as long as possible. Don't go and waste a bunch because you had a bad battle. Just run away and, you know, go back and heal. Try again. Uh, if I haven't mentioned so before, um, save states in this game is a very bad idea. Uh, this is one of the... Uh, use it, please. Thank you is one of the causes of this game freezing, and if you continue to rely and constantly load from save states and play, you will get the game to freeze up on you. I've had it freeze up number a number of times on uh, just playing through with my test run, and so beware of that. Use the regular saves. Use save states if you have to in certain situations, item creation, etc. Uh, running into that dungeon like I was, I was going to just load the save state and eventually... You can actually save in this area, by the way. It's technically a world map area. Go figure. But, uh, you know, save and then, you know, reload from a normal save file, which does not cause the game to freeze particularly often, if at all. But, uh, yeah, so... I would definitely recommend doing that. If you notice there, the uh, gut symbol appeared uh, above Radix as he was fighting. Now, that leads me to stats. Now, stats in this game are not necessarily confusing, but there are uh, a few situations. There's an introduction to our first question mark item. That is an item that needs to be identified, and we don't have the ability to identify items yet. And if we do, we have to put skill points into skills that I don't want to put skill points into yet, so we're not going to do it. Pretty much anything we get that's unidentified early game is worthless anyway, so I'm not particularly worried about it. Uh, again, like I was... Oh, I forgot that timer. Damn it. Uh, as you can see, Eri is taking zero damage at this point, uh, which is good, which means she's not going to get herself killed. Uh, basically, as you level in an area, you'll eventually get a high enough defense value that you won't take any damage from normal attacks from enemies. You will take some. There's nothing over there, by the way. Uh, but, uh, you know, from special attacks or something like that. But if you get a high enough defense value, you can negate enemies' normal attacks. Specifically, like, with these bunnies, they can't hurt me. But uh, it depends on your levels. That will happen a few times throughout the game. I think I've already kind of talked about it briefly, but it will pop up throughout the game where it will happen to me, depending on where I am. There's a lot of backtracking to do. Of course, a lot of that will be edited out anyway. It's not like you'll have to see it, but uh, just kind of be aware that that is something that can happen in this game, and it is likely to happen. Anyway, right now, I'm not going to waste a lot of time on using... Uh, special techs because they really don't do too much. In fact, did I learn one for Iria recently? No, I did not. She learns it, I think, at her next level up. We head down here. We can pick up a treasure. Another resurrect bottle. Save, 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 save. Not save states. Save the item. Anyway, I was about to uh, talk about um, stats. And I would like to do that. Oops, I went through that a little quickly. We got something called Sweet Syrup and Spectacles. Let's see, check out any... Oh, by the way, I haven't mentioned this. Any item that appears in green text, such as a Resurrect Bottle, Blueberry, are items we've picked up or changed the amount we've had recently. I don't think it works if you use the item. You know, like if you use an Aqua Berry, it's not going to glow green afterward. But basically, if you get more, you find them in a chest, get them after battle. 
do an item creation to get them, then, uh, yeah, so you actually get some stuff from them. That's pretty cool. Here we get a 5-ounce steak. I got this in a battle off screen uh, when I was running back to town there. Uh, so yeah, that does that. That's a piece of uh, food, I believe, like the sweet syrup is. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're the same type of item, and I believe they are not usable in battle. They are only outside of battle usage. So, there's no reason to stock up on these types of items. These are the type of items you'll end up creating through uh, cooking, the item creation ability that you can get at a later point. We don't have all the abilities to do it yet, but uh, eventually we'll be able to cook items, and cook food, and when we do that, we'll get um, you know, items such as this that restore HP or MP or whatever. But they cannot be used in battle, so their uses are kind of limited. I would recommend using them outside of battle to heal, heal instead of using things like blueberries, which you can only use in, well, you know, you can't only use them in battle, but they can be used in battle while the food cannot. So, anyway, that's what those are. And I would like to continue moving up this way. I will talk about stats. I'm kind of pushing it off. I, the only reason I started to mention it before was because it just happened to show up in battle, and I do want to kind of point that out when I talk about stats. And I'll talk about them when I get to uh, the next city here, because there's a couple of things I really need to go over before I can really record much more as, as it pertains to the episodes. Now, I may, as I've recorded this, I may throw up an additional... Um, episode, or just kind of like a, a question thing, because I want to know what you guys are th gonna think about the different characters in this game. Now, the characters, the optional characters we get in this game, some of them determine other aspects of the game. Now, going over here leads to a dead end, so I'm not gonna bother with that. Uh, there are no items over there, as far as I know. But, uh, the biggest thing I want to talk about in this episode Stop hitting me. Asshole, stop it! Really, game? Goddamn stunlock! <laughs> As you can see, uh, well, you may have caught a glimpse of it. Iria turned uh, bright red for a moment there, and her damage increased. That is called Anger Explosion. I believe I've mentioned this briefly before. Even though my character is dead, I am not going to waste an item to revive him. Though, I am going to use that 5-ounce steak on Iria and the sweet syrup on her as well so that she has enough HP to survive if I do run into another battle. Now, hidden behind this rock here is a chest containing spectacles. And if we continue going this way, I'm of course going to run into a battle. Uh, here's something we can show off now. Some battle aspects. If you hit the... Uh, that's my X button, meaning it's the B button. B button, you can now select which character you're going to use. Now, I'm going to select Iria and just have her spam her attack for now. There is... You won't actually be able to start controlling a different character other than Radix, unfortunately. They've corrected that in later games. Um, specifically, Star Ocean until the end of time, though I can't recall if they did it in uh, Second Story as well. Now, the one other thing we can do, let's select area. Uh, yeah, let's select area here. Um, if we select the new, which button is it? Now, you can actually maneuver where they go, which is what I would like to do. Here we can maneuver our tactics and change our tactics in mid-battle if you want. Uh, change. This refers to their equipment, I believe. So you can change equipment in mid-battle if you so choose. Now, yeah, so if you press the uh, Y button, you can choose a destination to move to. That's what I tried to do before, but for whatever reason, it wasn't wanting to work for me. Anyway, she now levels, so does Seas. Seas learns Rift Wave, which, as we already know, is not particularly useful. And now they've bypassed Radix, which, of course, will not last forever. Radix will definitely be our highest level character by the end of the game. Though I do have ways of kind of balancing out the, uh, the character levels. If you don't balance them out, they Radix will tend to be like 10 levels over your characters by the time you've beaten every enemy in the game. So, 
like I was saying, uh, let's just go into our menu here and throw Chikung Fist. Okay. It's actually somewhat decent. It's a short range attack, but it can also be used on long range. So I'm just going to set it on one button. She doesn't, well, put it on near and far attacks, which means that if I'm controlling her, I can be far away from the enemy and run straight over and use the attack as opposed to running over with an attack and then using the scale afterwards. So that's kind of the use of having them both like that. That way, every time I press the L button, I know I'm just going to use the attack. I don't have to figure out how far or close or whatever I am from the enemy. Rift Wave, I can't do that with. There is a bypass to that, and I will go over that later. Um, any of you who've played this game and done any amount of research, I'm sure knows exactly how that works, but uh, if not, I will definitely show you. Anyway, let's uh, talk to you and you. NPCs are not particularly interesting in this game. Now, I don't know how long this video is because I don't know how long I was stopped on my timer. So hopefully it's not ending up too long. Anyway, we're looking for the weapon shop. CS doesn't know the town very well, so we're just going to all go looking for it. Anyway, this is the traveler guy that we saw before. He gives us a spell potion. I'm sorry if that dialogue went by quickly. I had no control over it. And this seems to be a trend in a lot of uh, games. At least there was this in Final Fantasy IX. Happens in this game. I think it happened in Breath of Death, actually. I think it happens in some of the other Star Ocean games, too. Anyway, about characters. Certain characters prevent us from getting other certain characters in the game. Optional characters always have influences. Um... It's hard to go into details without spoiling things about who the characters are going to be and such and such. Suffice to say, early in the game, you have an option of character A, character B, and neither of those two. Now, character A allows you to get a special technique for Radix at the end of the game. Character B allows you to get um, a special item for Radix which is the second best accessory in the game, but it's only useful for erratics, and you can get unlimited of them. However, they don't sell for anything, and like I said, only erratics can use them, they cannot be used on anyone else. So, there is that. Uh, but the, by the time you can usually get that item, you are also at a point where you can get the best item in the game, and it's basically a matter of farming it. So, I'm going to be doing some of that. Um, in addition to that, there's the option of Actually, that same option where you get that item, not only do you get that item, but you miss out on another character later in the game, a character which I kind of want to include in my party. Not to mention, this character that I'm talking about is not particularly useful and I won't be using him long term. Like I said, this gets kind of convoluted and complicated and it's really hard to kind of talk about without actually, you know, spoiling different things or, you know, sitting down and talking to someone who's actually played the game or debating on which character path you should go. That being said, I don't know which characters to use. I thought I was close because I was just going to go for the extra um, skill because, you know, I wasn't missing out on any characters by doing it. And it was, you know, good enough. The character you get, the first one, is a little better than the second one, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah, I need your guys' kind of input on this. Anyone who's played this game, do you have... A specific character that you want me to show off there is one character that you get at the end of the game the last character one of the last characters you have access to that starts at a really low level that i've never used before because i've always missed the damn item because i always forget about it and i would like to show that character off there's also a subplot involving another character i've never got because i never found him all that useful He's kind of like a red mage character. Those of you who've played the game, of course, know who I'm talking about. So, yeah, I'm kind of at an impasse here, and I would kind of like to know your guys' opinion. Is there something specific you want me to show off? Um, certain character that you want to have? I'm not going to do a run where I show off everything, because that would just take too long, and the minimal differences, you know, aren't enough that I would want to show them all off. Um, there is a sequence if you recruit that red mage character I was talking about where not only does he get his own side quest but 
he's involved with another character to do another plot point later in a optional dungeon late in the game. So there's a lot of different options to work with here. So yeah, I really don't know how I want to do that, and I want your guys' opinion on it. Um, hopefully, uh, you know, I can get some more work done in my testing to find out which characters I kind of like to use the most, and that will be able to influence. Uh, that being said, I haven't done any more since the last episode went up, so... Anyway, I said I was going to talk about the stats, and I'm out of time. I'm probably way over what I wanted to be, so... Oops. So, that being said, give me your opinions and comments, or messages, or whatever you want to do, and hopefully uh, I can make a choice at some point along the way. Anyway, that's all for this one. I will show, over, show off stats at the start of the next video. Don't you worry. We'll talk about those. Anyway, that's all for this one, and I'll see you guys next time.